Hola Year 9, welcome to Lesson 6 and today you're going to be looking at weather expressions in the preterite tense. So for today's lesson the equipment you will need is as follows. The exercise book that the school gave you, your knowledge organiser from module 5 which is on class charts and you can open in a window, a pen, and wordreference.com also on class charts for you. So pause to get that ready now and play to continue. Thank you for all the work you've been sending in to me. Um, everything should have been um, sent back to you by email now with any reflection you need to do, any possible corrections, and you should have all your achievement points for excellent home learning, so well done. Uh, please remember to email me if you have any questions at all about the activities in today's lesson and here's my email address. Plus something a little bit new, I'm going to nominate six students every lesson and ask you to send me a photo in of your work and your names will be on class charts um, and also they'll be on the final slide today. I look forward to hearing from you. OK, so your title today, ¿Qué tiempo hizo? What was the weather like? And then I've written fecha for you to write down the date for me. Objetivo, this also needs writing down your objective to describe what I did on my holiday depending on the weather. The do now activity should take you about five minutes, including writing today's date and title, which is ¿Qué tiempo hizo? and completing the do now task, which is to translate the phrases, just write in Spanish. There is no need to write in English because you have this information in your books from last lesson. If you need to check the date, it's on class charts. Okay, pause to complete this now and then press play to check your answers. And now please check your answers. El año pasado fui a Italia e hice turismo porque me gustó. Okay, so make sure you've got your accent on the O of me gustó. Also, you'll notice that um, rather than an E, a Y before hice, because hice starts with an H-I, we have to use an E instead of the letter E in Spanish. OK, so before an I or HI, we use the letter E, E, rather than the Y, E. Muy bien. Uh, dos, me gusto porque lo pasé genial. Make sure you've got your accent on the O and the of gusto and pasé the E. Y número tres, hace dos años descansé y me gustó porque fue estupendo. Make sure you've got your accent on descanse on the E and gusto on the O. OK, I'm going to pass you on to Miss Reardon now to teach you the rest of the lesson. Please, if your name is on class charts on the final slide, send me photos of your fantastic work to get achievement points. OK, gracias la clase. Adios. OK, so now we're going to go over our past tense weather expressions. And what I would like you to do is repeat the Spanish after me. You'll recognise all of the vocabulary because we've already done it in the present tense. You'll just notice that it's the verb that's changed. Let's go. Hizo frío. Muy bien. Hizo sol. Hizo calor. Hizo buen tiempo. Hizo mal tiempo. Llovió. Let's do that one again. It's a trickier one. Llovió. So we've got our double L sound and our V, which is pronounced like a B. Moving on. Nebo. Hizo viento. Y por último, hubo nubes. Excelente. Muy bien, chicos. So we've only got one really tricky one there, which is llovió. And we just need to remember that we've got our double L at the beginning 
making our y sound, and then the V, which we pronounce as a B. Good work. Let's move on to matching up the vocabulary. As you can see, I've listed the vocabulary we've just been through on the left here in Spanish. And what I would like you to do is to write that down in your books and then write the correct English translation from the blue box next to it. So you'll write number one, you'll be your, equals, it rained. And I think you'll do this in no time at all because you're already really confident with these expressions in the present tense. Please pause the video now to do this. Great work, Year 9. Let's move on to actually learning it. OK, chicos, so please take a moment to check your answers. You can do this just by pausing the video and checking that you've got the correct English next to the Spanish. Well done. Let's move on. So, Year 9, I thought we'd use Quizlet again to learn the vocabulary. So I think it's a little bit more engaging than just doing it on your own. So, what you need to do is, just like last time, follow the link to Quizlet, which is on class charts, and is just the same as this link that I've popped on the screen. First of all, I'd like you to do the learn, write and spell sections, then do the match and gravity game, before finally testing yourselves. So remember, if you're unable to access Quizlet, just spend 10 minutes doing look, cover, write, check to learn the vocabulary, and then spend 10 minutes testing yourselves on it. And once you've done that, we'll come back and put it all into context in a text. So please pause the video now and go back to class charts to click on the link. So at this point, you should have done your vocabulary work on Quizlet. Let's move on. OK, so how we're going to tackle this text is by doing the following. I'm going to read a phrase in Spanish and then I'd like you to repeat it. And we'll do that until we reach the end of the text. Whilst you're listening, be really paying attention to my pronunciation and echo it as best as possible when you repeat the phrase after me. Let's go. El año pasado fui de vacaciones a Francia. ¿Dónde hice esquí en la montaña? Hizo frío porque nevó mucho. ¡Qué bien! También hice turismo. Pero no saqué muchas fotos. Porque, en mi opinión, fue un poco aburrido. Sin embargo, compré muchos recuerdos para mis amigos. Muy bien, Year 9. Let's continue. So now I've added another text. We don't just have Pedro's text, we also have Martha's. And the reason why you've got two is just because they're quite short and I think you're really familiar with a vast, the vast majority of the vocabulary. And I think you can cope with two. So what I'd like you to do is read both texts. You can read Pedro's once again, just to be more familiar with it. And I'd like you to copy and complete the table below. So I've given you a column for pretera tense verbs, a column for weather vocabulary, and a column for connectives. And what you need to do is read the texts and pick out the information which goes in each column. Okay, so please pause the video now Copy and complete the table with the information asked from the texts. Off you go. Great work. Let's see how you've got on. OK, so here I've given you all the answers. Just to note that hizo is indeed a past tense verb. On its own, it means he or she did. But it's also part of the weather vocabulary, so I just put it in brackets down the bottom. Please pause the video and take a moment to check that you've got everything.
well done. Let's move on and look into these texts a little bit further. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is read each text once more through and say who does each activity. So if we look at number one, it says who dot 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 went shopping. So we just need to read through and look for who went shopping. And that is in Pedro's text because he says, compre muchos recuerdos para mis amigos, right at the end. So I bought lots of souvenirs for my friends. So therefore we know that number one is Pedro. So off you go, please. Just write the numbers one to six and write the name, either Pedro or Marta. You don't need to write the question out at all. Please pause the video to do this now. OK, let's check the answers. OK, so number one we know was Pedro. Numero dos is Marta. Numero tres is also Marta. Numero cuatro is Pedro. Numero cinco is Marta. And numero seis is Marta. If there's any of those which you got wrong, just go back and look at the text and find out why it was wrong. Good work. Let's move on to the final activity of today's lesson. OK, so now we've been over these texts in a lot of detail. What I'd like you to do is translate Pedro's text to English. You can use your book if you need to, to look back and find anything. But I think the vast majority of you will be able to give this a really good go, just relying on what you know and what you've learned over the past series of lessons. OK, please pause the video now and complete your translation. You don't need to write out the Spanish, just write the English. Great, get ready to check your answer. OK, so let's go through the translation in English. And please, when I say that we've got the end to the end of a phrase, pop a little tick just as I've marked on mine. So last year, I went on holiday to France. If you've got that phrase correct, give it a tick. Where I went skiing in the mountains, give that a tick. It was cold because it snowed a lot, give that a tick. Great, give that a tick. Also, I went sightseeing, tick but I didn't take many photos because, in my opinion, it was a bit boring. Tick. However, I bought lots of souvenirs for my friends. Tick. Now you can count up your ticks and see how many you got out of seven. If you think you've got something slightly different and think your translation would still be correct, feel free to run that past your teacher. Just send them an email with your version and see what they think. Great work today, Year 9. We've had the opportunity to really capitalise on what we've been doing on holidays in the past over the last few lessons. If you've got any time left at all, or would like just to stretch yourself that little bit further, what I'd like you to do is translate Marta's text to English. Feel free to then email it to your teachers and they can check the translation for you. Have a great rest of your day, Year 9, and you'll hear from me in your next lesson. Adios! Well done, Year 9. And my nominees for today's um, photo, please, of your fantastic work are Hamim, Meghna, AJ, Maddie B, Jess and Tyler. Gracias. Hasta luego.